Hey, welcome to Max8 tutorial number 32, Audio Drives Effect. In this um, particular tutorial, we're going to take the jitter.play object, just get a new uh, patcher up there, Command N or Control N if you're on a PC, and we're going to use a very particular um, object here to do this, and if you just type the letter J, you get JIT dot object, and then we're going to type movie, and just make sure that you get not the movie with no tilde, but the movie with a tilde. And then you can click outside of that, and then we can put a, <clears throat> we can drag a movie onto it, but why not let's learn even another thing, which is after the tilde put space, and then type at, which is really for attribute movie file, and then put a space, and then crash test dot m o v. Now, putting this in here is just a way of telling it ahead of time that you want it to do something. You can always um, play over that, uh, excuse me, sort of override it by putting something else in there. And um, I can't swear this will work for you on a PC. Maybe .mov is not going to work. I don't know. But for if you're on a Mac, .mov will work. And Crash Test is a movie that's included in your Max package. So to get a JIT movie to play, we're going to need the Play Bar object. So just go ahead and type the uh, N Play Bar play play bar there it is and uh, we got that so we can stick that up there make it whoops there we go connect them up and that way we'll be able to loop this as much as we want now we're going to be using the sound okay let's uh i'm just going to I don't know why it's disturbing to me to see that playing along there. So we've got the movie in there. It's not doing anything yet. But what you will notice if you unlock your patcher again is that with JIT movie tilde, you get an audio out here and an audio out here. So we have stereo outputs. So let's type the letter L in the spirit of in the... I have to click in my patcher here for some reason. Um, in the spirit of learning our shortcuts, let's type the letter L now. And you notice you get an object that begins with live dot. And so that's all the things that will also be able to work with Ableton Live, which may be handy to you future DJs and VJs out there. So we get a live dot, and it's already filled in gain, but you could start typing gain, and you'll get gain with a tilde. There we go. And then we get the live gain there. And just want you to pay attention here. There's output channel one goes in the top left of the live gain. Output audio channel two goes in the right hand input. And then we'll put an easy DAC down here. Uh, just type N and then easy uh, DAC. And it pops right up there and it turns into a speaker. Now here's the thing that some people have made mistakes on in the past, and just be careful. Do you see all these little tiny buttons here? I'm gonna make this bigger just to illustrate. They, there we go. There's literally five outlets, and just to make it confusing, you get the leftmost outlet for channel one, and the second, come on, there they go. You kind of have to hover over them to get them to light up. And the second to the left for channel two. And then that goes to the right hand inlet of the Easy DAC. And now we should have audio running. But before we get the audio running, we may as well get a patcher window up here. Uh, type a J again. Type P, W, and you should get patcher window. And remember that you can resize this but before you start moving it, you might want to hold the shift key down so that it stays 
in scale. So there is our window, and we'll just uh, stick this over here. In fact, let's now since we're moving uh, so quickly down into the right, let's move this up into the left, and then we'll continue here. So you'll notice the third from the left um, output here is for the video. So we'll just run that over here lock our patcher, and make sure the whole thing works. Oh, I didn't turn the sound on, so bump your sound on. And there you go. You've got some sound that you can, fortunately, also turn down, and the sound is still coming out. So, there it is, all working. And I'm going to just turn this down because it can, it can wear on you a little bit. So we'll just, uh, but we can see that it's running. So, um, there it is, and now what we want to do is find a way to drive an effect for this. So, let's um, get our effect set up first. Let's just uh, copy this window so we have a place for it to be. So, this is going to be our, our uh, final output here. There we go. Nice and big. And uh, then our effect, why don't we just use something simple like a JIT, type the letter J, uh, BR, COSA, B-R-C-O-S-A, which is um, just a brightness, contrast, saturation. And we'll hook that up to this window. And then we will also hook up the video coming out here. To Jitbergosa effect. And there it is with uh, no alterations. Did you notice that I forgot to hold the shift key and this thing's all out of whack now? Nothing you can do about it except make a new one, you know, because you can't get that. Anyway, not to complain. Okay, so here we go. So we want to control an effect for Burkosa and um, I'll just show you how to uh, find out what they are. Take a look over here at reference, and we can see that some of the attributes of Burkosa are brightness, contrast, um, these have to do with the dimensions and everything, but also saturation. So um, let's just go ahead and use contrast. We can send it, usually if it says at, means it's an attribute. We could type this in here and say at contrast zero or something like that, but we're going to just use contrast, the word, um, as part of a message to control it. So let's type, uh, type the letter M here for message and then type contrast and then string, which is a dollar sign, one. Okay, so what happens when you type this message is that any message coming in here is string one and it gets put whoops and it gets put behind the word contrast and then um, contrast would normally be a float so I'm gonna just gonna put a uh, a float over oh, I'm gonna put it down here so we can see it nice and big uh, type the letter F you should get a float and then I'm going to connect it up to that contrast. I have my reasons for doing it this apparently backwards way. Um, okay, so now if you lock your patcher, you'll be able to see that if you run contrast uh, up to two, it gets very high contrast. And if you run it down to zero, you have absolutely no contrast. So, um, and at one, 0 1.0, 1.0, it should be um, normal contrast, and that looks about normal. Okay, so now what we're going to try to figure out how to do is get the outcoming um, audio to generate a number for us, maybe between like high contrast 2 and no contrast 0. Um, so let's uh, unlock our patcher and we're going to type uh, the letter N to get a new object, and the new object we're going to use 
is average or AVG um, with a tilde. And what average does is it takes an incoming signal and you could connect it to both of the signals here. And it computes the average over a length of time that is specified by a metronome banging on it. So we have to make ourselves a metronome. New metro. Um, um, videos usually play at um, 24, oh well, about 30 frames per second or 25, but um, about uh, 40 represents a good sort of video rate for averaging. So I'm going to say Metro 40, and um, then we're also going to stick a toggle on the top of that, just type a T. So connect the toggle to the Metro, connect the Metro to the average, and connect the average to another float, and we'll see what's coming out of it when we lock our patcher and turn it on. So we're, you can see we're getting quite low numbers up to almost 0.1. Well, 0.1 isn't going to do really anything to this. So what we're going to do to compensate for that is put a scale object in here. So type the letter N and type scale, not a tilde scale because we're actually just using data now, as strange as that might seem and then uh, type 0 0.0 to 1.0 because those should be the numbers that are normally coming in and we want our output to be well we decided we wanted it to be uh, 0 0.0 to 2.0 we sort of decided we can change it later but those are sort of our our scale numbers there. So this is where the input comes in, the output of this float is going to come in here, and then we shall see what we get by connecting it to this float right here. And we can see it's working, though not fabulously it's working. So how are we going to adjust it? Well, if we make the scale of what's coming in, so this is the um, low input value, high input value, low output value, and high output value. Um, so we can, um, we don't want to mess with the input value because it's the lowest input value is going to be zero. Um, but if we make the high input value a little lower, then it will scale it will scale it more to get it to 2. So let's just um, type another F here and connect this to the high uh, input value and then we'll let's say put it, whoops, don't make it negative um, there's 0.5, let's go down to 0.1 because that's all I'm seeing here. So if we go down to 0.1 we hit about the highest value that we're getting out of average and you can see that as the sound, sorry I'll, I'll turn the sound up here um, so as the sound gets the loudest it gets to the highest um, highest contrast and then when it shuts off the whole thing goes gray so that's it, a pretty simple way to um, modify an effect. And um, I'm just going to turn that down because it uh, makes me lose my concentration. And of course, you know, um, you can always um, experiment with um, this value translating into other things by putting another float on here for, let's just say, for example, you could put this on the, uh, uh, let's see, not the high output value. Well, you could, you could if you changed it from being positive 2 to negative 2, just for example, um, 
you could make this uh whoops sorry go to uh a negative image when it got brighter that's one possibility or if you felt like it i'm going to turn that back up to two Actually, I'll, I'll make it zero and then um, I'm going to move it over a little bit and we'll make another one and then let's connect this one to the low output value and make it uh, locking our patcher to a negative two so now uh, turning the sound back up when the sound stops it becomes a negative image and then when it gets to its highest point it becomes gray or we can make it positive at its highest and anyway you can you can play with it um, as you like there's the original which is gray when it's quiet and two when it's full blast anyway I'm gonna turn this down you can of course play with those and make a preset for them and find out what's interesting but that pretty much covers it a simple way to have audio drive an effect in max thanks for watching and i will catch you in the next video enjoy